Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. So uh, I started up a new YouTube channel. I used to have over 400 videos on my last one and uh, I am doing um, something like more than two minutes videos now. Uh, basically I'm going to try to explain things a little bit slower. Hopefully a lot of you folks will appreciate that. I'm doing this for uh, my channel. It's going to be called Linux for Senior, but Linux is for everyone. So anybody can use this information. But in today's video, I'm going to talk about RAM memory. If you just want to know about RAM memory, then this would be a good video. If you want to try to attempt to replace or upgrade some of your memory in your console computers or even laptops. I'm going to talk more uh, console computers than laptops, though. But I'm going to show you how you can find out what type of motherboard you have so you can get and shop for the correct RAM. And I'll talk about uh, some of the particulars on RAM and uh, just give you some detailed information. So I have a camera turned on and that camera is pointing to a console right now that uh, it's one of my computers that I use for testing. And uh, the RAM that I'm speaking of that's installed are these little red modules. So the ones that I have on my desk here are uh, also spare RAM modules. And I'm going to talk about uh, what type. You may have heard, heard buzzwords like DDR3, DDR4. The speed of the RAM is 1600 or 3200 or something to that effect. The first thing that we need to find out, whether you have a console or a laptop, is what is this? What kind of motherboard do you have? Now, there are quite a few tools in Linux that will help you with that. Linux Mint has a couple of things. One is already installed, and then you can install other graphical uh, applications. And I'll, I'll point those out as I go, or even use Terminal to find this information out. Can I start there? And then we'll move on. Now, you can find Terminal in the Linux Mint menu. In my case, Linux Mint 21.1 stuff. You will see some custom icons, which I'm not going to cover in this video. But if you were to search for T, you will find Terminal. Your icon will be black. So you can open it up here. I have a shortcut of it on my panel bar, so I'm going to open mine here. So I'm going to use one command. Some distributions, you need to install this uh, particular utility, and a lot of distributions you don't. INXI, but let's pretend you don't have that installed. A lot of these Linux distros will actually say, when you perform this command, it'll say, not installed, here's how to install it. And it'll be like sudo apt install and the name of that, INXI. That's how simple that is. So type in INXI space dash big F XZ. Now, why do I use that dash big F XZ? Because you may have seen the derivative of INXI somewhere else, maybe. There's a lot of different ways to have what they call switches on some commands. And that's just a switch that doesn't show privacy information. So I'm going to punch it up. And it has a wealth of information. Well, what I'm after is actually um, the machine section. But let me just talk about this distribution really quickly. So we're dealing with... Linux Mint 21.1 Vera, the Cinnamon desktop. So I got that piece of information. It even tells me the kernel version. So down here is MOBO, Motherboard. It is a MicroStar manufacturer. The model number is here, that MPGM or B550 Gaming Plus, and I can continue on, but I'm just gonna focus in on this briefly. When you have this open, you can actually right-click and copy this information and then open up a web browser and paste it in your search field of whatever search engine that you want and just add the word manual. You're looking for the manual for your particular motherboard so you can find out what kind of RAM is in, on your motherboard. How's that? There's also a wealth of information here. There's the central processing unit. Another name for that is CPU. I have an AMD Ryzen 9 on this machine. There's a graphics card. I have a GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. It's a 6GB video card. It even tells me what video resolution I'm running and also what kind of driver is loaded. I have the proprietary one. I also have information on my network stuff. 
I have information on my Bluetooth, my hard drives, storage devices, even by model number and manufacturer. There is a wealth of information in here. I'll scroll down to the bottom. There's even, uh, if um, some of these uh, sometimes report sensor information, but I just wanted to let you see the memory part. When you go purchase RAM, you normally are purchasing it in GB format, gigabytes. This is just converted down to GIB format. It's no big deal. Uh, that is still 64 gigabytes by the time you add all that stuff up. Um, so it's just the way it's displayed. Now, I'm going to close this and I'm going to walk over to my Linux Mint 21.1 stuff menu. In your case, the Mint menu. If you feel more comfortable, I'll turn this icon off. So click your Mint menu and then type in SY. And there's a lot of hits for SY, but the one that you should have already installed is System Reports. So click that open and then click the second tab called System Information. Your motherboard information is in the second section. M-O-B-O, -O, just like in Terminal, MicroStar, and MP blah 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 gaming plus this is my motherboard your your model number obviously will be different and you can also do this on laptops right click and copy that information punch it into a web browser just add the word manual so that's what you're looking for the manual for your motherboard third option go to your software manager my icon is a little different than yours software manager for Linux Mint cinnamon desktop H-A-R-D, it's a weird thing. What we're looking for is hard info. Mine is installed. It's got uh, pretty good ratings actually too. Now, depending on your particular, um, however you set up your icon themes and light and dark themes is what you're gonna get kind of out of this. But you can get a rough idea of what you're gonna get. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna launch it here. I'm gonna actually show you how to search for it after you got it installed, if you want this if you want this. Go up to your Mint menu. You can either use SY, and uh, in this case, it's the fourth item in my menu down. It's called System Profiler and Benchmark. The other way of doing it is um, clear the field, H-A-R-D, and that's the second item, System Profiler and Benchmark. Now I will open that up. So if you want this in a graphical user type why is it called hard info? Because that's the folks who made this. System profiler and benchmark. And yes, you can do uh, some stress tests on this also down, at, down here at the bottom. I do caution you with old systems though, because it does tax your system pretty hard when you do some of that stuff. But you can see the wealth of information in here. Under the computer summary though, your particular motherboard model number is right here. I cannot drag and copy that though. I would have to take a pencil and a piece of paper and handwrite that down. That's why a lot of times opening up terminal and just dragging your text and doing a copy or go to your um, mint menu and look for system reports and doing it this way. So you can copy that information instead of handwriting it down on a piece of paper. This is all up to you though. Keep in mind, I can highlight anything in here and copy and paste things. And you can paste that right into a web browser. Just don't forget to add the word. You're looking for a manual for that particular motherboard. So in either case, I wanted to let you see what this looks like. So again, this is made by Hard Info. This is also available for a lot of different Linux distributions. Not all, but a lot. I'm gonna close that. So let's go back on topic and open up the camera. So. This particular, um, I need to slide my chair over. I'm sorry about the camera equipment, but I make do with what I have. So um, this is in a package, so it's very reflective. That's why I'm pulling it out. And I'm gonna leave this down for a second. So this is a typical uh, modern day memory stick. You'll notice there's a notch in here, and that's very important when you're inserting that into your motherboard. So if you uh, don't feel comfortable doing this, obviously get a friend or a family member maybe know a little bit about computers, but it's actually pretty simple to replace RAM. And um, 
they only go in one way. You cannot put them upside down because there's a large gap here and a small gap there. You have four tabs on these um, most of the time. There's very few new motherboards that have less than four slots. So I'm highlighting this with, uh, maybe this is too bright, I'm sorry. That's the only flashlight I have currently. But these four little red guys is your memory. And normally when you put uh, memory in uh, with uh, motherboards with four slots, you would put like one here, skip the space and put the other one there. Or vice versa, one here and one over here, depending on your orientation you're looking at. Because these are in channels. There are two channels here. Not that that's super important to understand. But the release tabs are here. So if I push down, I need to put down the flashlight for a second. And I'm going to push this. And hopefully you can see that release. So this is now popped up in the air. So some of your um, bottom rows, or even the, depending on the orientation you're looking at, will be fixed and the other side will have this latching mechanism. And if uh, you want to think about it, uh, I used the word cattywampus on my last video. But you kind of want to put them in, in a slight angle. I don't mean a severe angle, a slight angle. Because you, you're going to have to get that in between, a lot of times, in between that slot there. There'll be a little um, notch in there also. But you need to squeeze the board in between. And then snap it into place. You'll see the notch on the bottom of the motherboard. So pay attention to that. And please do this without the power cord. You notice my... The back end of this thing has no power cord, okay? Always do this stuff, kind of stuff without the power. I think it's fairly logical. So some of the brands that are out there, like Kingston and others, um, you may want to go to your favorite electronics store, uh, maybe um, Amazon or Best Buy or something similar like that, to go shopping for these things. Now, when you are shopping for these things, let me uh, make mention of why there's two of these in a package versus uh, say the single sticks so let's say you are um, on a budget and you want to uh, fix your system up and let me snap this back before i forget i apologize there we go uh, let's say you're on a budget and you uh, can only afford eight gigabytes and i do believe they make them in a single stick but they also make them in pairs four and four also 16 gigabyte would be eight and eight you get the idea don't make the mistake of buying a stick and then um, uh, two weeks later when you've got money and or uh, you decide I, I want some more RAM is to buy another stick because a lot of times what happens, even if you buy the same brand, they're different and they will have, give you problems because they're not out of the same batch and uh, they weren't paired up originally. I have ran into this problem. I've been working with computers for over 30 years. Went through a lot of this. This has happened to me. So uh, basically, uh, you want to avoid those kind of problems and buy them in sets if you're going to do this. Um, if you are wanting to get, uh, let's say, one of these for 8 gigabytes or 16 in two modules, don't buy the first one and then a week later go buy the other one. Buy them as a set. Okay. So basically, hold off on, on doing that. Save your money and buy the, the modules the next week. There are many different brand, brands and manufacturers. So do a little bit of research online. Um, you can use Amazon.com. I know the reviews on there are kind of maybe, but you can also get reviews online, okay? So there's a lot of different brand names of RAM out there. That's Corsair right there. This is Kingston, just to give you an idea, okay? Now, let me talk about some buzzwords that you may hear. So you got your motherboard manual out you look through it and now you know what kind of RAM your motherboard fits, assuming it's a console. Of course, you can use that other information to find out about your laptop, but your laptops are sometimes hard to take apart and the RAM is a little bit different in those. But you can use those utilities to at least find out your motherboard on your laptop if you're curious. But more importantly, just be aware that there is a lot of different types of RAM out there. And you will hear those buzzwords like DDR3 or DDR4. Or uh, you'll have um, uh, like numbers like 1600 and 3200. Those are usually referencing you to the speed. And when you have that manual for your motherboard, you should be able to find out what 
kinds of speeds your motherboard can handle. And most of your modern motherboards will handle more than one kind of uh, RAM uh, speed, in other words. So a lot of my boards are compatible with 1600 all the way up to 3200, for instance. Just throwing numbers at you. So your best friend is your manual. And most of the time you can download the manuals for your motherboard in PDF format so you can read them on your screen at your leisure. But whatever you do, try to buy these in pairs if you're going to be installing more than one chip. And make because you want them out of the same batch. You don't want to buy this chip today and then a week later and buy another chip because you have no idea what batch it came from. And they could have some compatibility issues. Doesn't always happen, but it does. And don't always rely on all that speed information and DDR information being on these labels. They're normally on the packaging though. You're going to be ordering or purchasing these things normally at a store. And they all have a description, like Amazon has perfect descriptions on, on a lot of this stuff. And of course, some ratings also. So be aware of that. So again, one more advice to you. When you are buying RAM and you're doing this for yourself, buy them in, this, in, the, in the same sets. Either the, if you're doing two sticks or four sticks. If you're doing a single stick, that's a different animal. Just be aware that sometimes you will have incompatibility issues. Now, the four that are sitting in here were all bought at the same time. This is 32 gigabytes. So 32 divided by four. You can now figure out what each one of those are. All right. So there you have it in a nutshell, folks. A couple of different ways to find this information out, but it's most important for you to find out what kind of motherboard you're currently running. If you are wanting to replace RAM or upgrade RAM. Keep in mind you can still add RAM, and that is a great way to uh, make things uh, run a little bit faster. If you haven't seen my videos on hard drives, this is a solid state drive if you're curious. They're ultra thin. Okay, This is made by PNY. This is a 480 gigabyte drive. Wastes nothing. Only has two connectors. So let's talk about some of the stuff in this box. If you're not that familiar with computers, let me just give you the quick 411 if you're wanting to know. Power supply is right here. When you are replacing or purchasing power supplies, they come in various wattage capacities. Big old monster power cable out of the back. But a lot of times, the power supply that you're buying is you're trying to power up all of these components. Like the computer I'm filming this from, this is the CPU that's underneath this metal heat sink with this fan on it. It's about, it's about this tall. It's about another two inches tall of aluminum with a fan on it. Bigger, bigger one than this. So it consumes a lot of power is what I'm getting at. So um, your power supply is the one that supplies power. So these come in different wattage sizes. The physical box size pretty much is the same. So the motherboard is contained here, as you can see. A lot of circuitry is in here. CPU is underneath this fan and this metal looking heat shield or uh, heat sink. This is my RAM chips. The power supply main connector is right here. And then it has a sub connector right here. All of these cables come off this box. Then all this mess, this spaghetti over here also supplies power for possibly CD-ROMs, DVD players, internal internal drives, and other toys. So these are all just power cables. Your modern power cables look like this for serial ATA um, storage devices or hard drives. Mine is a solid state, but they make one exactly like this. That is a spinning hard drive. It has a platter on the inside that spins and vibrates. Eh, a little bit of vibration. Anyways, that's the power side of it. And of course, you have the serial ATA or SATA cable that gets plugged into my motherboard downstairs. This is an actual functional system. My graphics card is kind of hard to see, but that's what this big box is. I believe that's a four gigabyte uh, card. There's a little tiny uh, connector that, well not tiny, it's not that long, connector that this thing plugs into. And um, I also have this card right here. It's hard to see, but you can see the antennas right here. 
That's a network card. So sometimes when you have these riser cards, is what I call them, network cards, and it's a tiny little connector down here, uh, you can replace these or upgrade them as you go. I'll talk about that, those kind of videos a little bit later on down, down the pike because I got a lot of different Linux distros that I'm gonna actually do. So basically I'm trying to categorize these things the best I can and not favor one distribution over another. Let's put it that way. But this is where my wireless network stuff comes in. It, this is the power cable, it goes to a USB port. And then basically this plugs into the motherboard. So this could be, let's say this is an old one, it's an N network, N is in Nancy, and I wanted something faster internet wise, I would probably go with an AC, 802.11ac. Not that you need to remember those numbers. There's also AX. They're a little bit faster than AC. Your router has to be an AX router. And some of you folks know what I'm talking about. AC routers, M routers, that kind of stuff. It's just the speed of your wireless network. So these are replaceable. As a matter of fact, this is a fairly new one. I just put this box together just recently with some old components. But more importantly, let's get back on topic. So the RAM is fairly easy to replace. When you insert the RAM, power the thing up, a lot of the motherboard BIOS basic input operating system may complain you just got some different RAM in there. So allow yourself to be booted into the BIOS or you can even hit the... Uh, delete key or F1 or whatever the thing is displayed on your screen to get into the BIOS and look for the memory section inside the BIOS. Most of your BIOSes are, nowadays are graphical. You can even use mice on them, computer mice. But more importantly, find a section on memory. It could be something like XMP or some reference like that. You can find this information out in your manual that you've downloaded to find out what kind of RAM you needed. But the basic operation is this. A lot of your motherboards are self-sensing. They will auto-adjust to the speed of the RAM as long as it's properly plugged in. A lot of times when you plug in the modules and you plug in two, you'll put them in here and here and the thing won't boot right because they require you to put one here and possibly one over here and skip this space. Again, we're talking two channels. It's like one channel and two channel. So sometimes, based on what your motherboard manual tells you, they'll tell you which slot you should put your first two sets in. And again, most of the time, my experience has been, you put one here, you skip a space, and you put one in the other slot. Or if you want to go the other way, you put one here, skip this space, and put it in here. It all depends on the orientation you're looking at on your motherboard. Your manual is your best friend when it comes to that. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, obviously ask for help. Ask a friend, a family member, or worst case scenario, take it to the shop, your computer repair shop, and have them do it for you. But a lot of this stuff you can do yourself and save yourself some money. Just be careful. Unplug the power. Get the proper RAM for your particular motherboard. I gave you that information already. All you need to do is look it up. My motherboards and all motherboards are different. They're not the same. So one more recap here. I'm going to turn my camera off to conserve some power. And I'm going to bring up Terminal one more time. Terminal can be your friend. A lot of people that have Linux Mint shy away from that box. Please don't. Try to learn some of that. You can even punch in simple statements like calendars in here. But INXI space dash, and you can find that dash right next to the plus key on your keyboard. Big F, exit, XZ, enter. And look at the second section. You scroll to the top with your mouse. Grab a hold of the scroll bar if you like. My mouse pointer obviously is not standard. But what you're looking for is M-O-B-O, -O, motherboard. And then the manufacturer's MicroStar. And this is the model number right here. This is the full model number. I think probably it would be more likely sufficient if you have similar motherboards is probably copy this part of it. It's actually a B550, but it's made by MicroStar. 
So I would use that piece of information when I open up one of my web browsers to do a search. Do you want me to give you an example of something like this? I'm going to copy that text. I'll open up this web browser here and I'm going to do a paste. There's the, there's the manual for that. Okay, Tells me all about inserting RAM and even tells me what I just made mention to you. The way they, the RAM gets plugged in. All I did was copy that information from the terminal. You don't have to use terminal. Again, Linux Mint has also this feature for you. System reports. It's already there. All you need to do is copy the same information I just copied out of terminal right here. Okay, all up to you. You can, of course, handwrite this down. Open up your web browser and retype that. I think you'll find it's a lot easier just doing a cut, cut and paste in your web browser as far as text is concerned. Here's another tip for you folks. There's a lot of things you can do with cut and paste or copy and uh, if you're dealing with text or whatever, you can actually take this into a word processor and, and do a copy and then paste it in there also. I'm just being funny, but you can. So the other thing, if you are wanting to see this in a graphical, um, you can, uh, of course, install hard info. And what does it look like in your Mint menu? It says System Profiler. Even though I punched in the word hard, because this is made by hard info. Again, help, hard info available in your software manager for this distribution. Wealth of information in a graphical way. If you don't feel like looking at terminal, but you can't do a copy and paste, unfortunately. Okay. You can do copy to clipboard and, uh, you know, paste it somewhere else. So if I create an empty document, I should be able to probably paste that in there. No. Well, that's from the previous, but anyways. I would probably still use um, the um, terminal or the system reports from Linux Mint to actually do a copy and paste if I was uh, wanting to do this in a hurry because you're allowed to do copy and paste. So one more time, highlight it, whatever the model number of your motherboard is, copy it, open up your favorite web browser, favorite search engine, after you copied this, of course, and paste it. The other way, of course, take a piece of paper and a pencil, hand write that down. You can also minimize that. A lot of different things, folks. But replacing RAM is a piece of cake. Well, not a piece of cake, but it's fairly simple. Let's put it that way. So I have a lot of stuff open, so I'm going to close that. And uh, on that note, I hope you subscribed to uh, Linux for Seniors. I have lots of videos coming up. You may want to stay tuned. On that note, I will say have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.